Relationship Advice Update Caught wife trying to cheat with my friend from her eye watch Original story, I'm writing this from my phone, so bear with me if it's formatted wrong So last night my wife of 7 years decided to have a chill out night After dinner, she went to the den and was watching her programs, while I flitted between watching the Spurs football game and doing some odds and ends that I had planned Next thing I know, she's got the wine out and has had two bottles of the stuff. At around midnight, I went to check on her and seen she was out cold on the couch. I went to scoop her up when her eye watch thing buzzed and a message popped up on the screen. It said something along the lines of, ha, I can't do that, my name, would knock seven shades of crap out of me. I wondered what that was all about, so I pressed on it and it was a conversation between my wife and a friend of mine. Now I wouldn't say this guy is a close friend of mine but he's someone I've played 5 A-sides with for years, drank with, and have known since we were teenagers. We used to call him Jacket Holder, because when we got into scraps as teens, he'd always be the guy holding the jackets while everyone else went for it. Right, so as I said I pushed on the conversation while this thing is still attached to her wrist and scroll up to the top, and as far as I can tell it's him that contacts her first, unless she's deleted. There's lots of flirting and wink winking going on, but nothing that you could outright say was cheating. Then I get to last night and when she's drunk, she starts openly begging him for s. I couldn't believe my freaking eyes. I'm paraphrasing here because I can't remember the exact words, but she was saying stuff like how much she had always wanted him, how no one would ever find out if he did want to do something, and the last one that freaking killed me. That she was great at keeping secrets. I tried to scroll on her watch but couldn't find any other messages and I don't know her phone passcode. I put her in her bed and just sat in the kitchen in shock until I fell asleep. Then got up for work about 5.30. When I went to get in my work van, I just slunk down on the wheel and realized I couldn't face it, so I went back in the house grabbed a half-drunk bottle of vodka, filled to the top with coke and went on a walk down the railway line. We live beside a lot of woodland and a disused railway line that goes for miles and I've walked about half the length of it. I'm sitting under a railway bridge like a freaking troll right now, just seething at the whole thing. You'd probably think there's a fire going from about a mile away due to the steam coming out of my ears. So, what do I do? I don't want to speak to her, I can't even bear to look at her after reading that crap, it was like a dagger through my heart, I just feel like every morsel of love I had for her has evaporated into thin air after reading her begging like that. Freaking yuck. I honestly want to ghost her man, if I could, I would never speak to her again. The whole, I'm great at keeping secrets, was the thing that really got me though, like who even are you? It reeks, but it's a case of how far down the rabbit hole do I want to go? I don't care if I'm being honest, I'm just done. I've never felt so betrayed and disgusted in all my life. The thing is, I've invested so much in her not just as a partner, but as a person. I loved her so much and thought her personality, and by extension, my personality reflected that of good people. To realize she's a backstabbing snake makes me feel like a snake, I feel like a worse person than I was yesterday. The only way I can describe it is, for someone you looked up to, took advice and life lessons from to suddenly find out they were a pedo or a rapist or just a downright creep. Your entire perception of yourself and who you are would be shattered, because you've took on board what they've said and invested time into a creep. God I'm rambling nonsense, I apologize. I'm lucky in that our house is owned by my parents, who six years ago moved to a retirement village and we moved in. The house will be bequeathed to me when they die, but I don't, and hopefully won't own it for a long time. They couldn't be bothered with the upkeep and all the problems etc and wanted to see out their final days in peace, so when we do divorce, my soon to be ex won't be getting her hands on it. So, what do I do then? I'm honestly thinking of just not saying a word and throwing her right out. Also while walking here, it went through my mind to get my mate who's a locksmith to quietly change the locks today, I could feed her any old garbage about something from the doors being broken, she won't care what's going on anyways, as long as I'm about. Then after he's done lock the front door and tell her to come out and look at something out the back, when she comes out just run back in and lock the door behind me. That sounds childish as f doesn't it? Ack, seriously though I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm staring at a bottle right now and my life feels like it has been ripped apart at the seams. As for that prick so called friend of mine, there's no doubt he was up to something here. There's also no doubt I wouldn't have caught wind of this at all, so I'll be seeing him very soon, never mind holding jackets he'll be holding his face. Now for the top advice before we read the update. That's rough mate, can't imagine what you're going through. Hope you pull through. I can tell you're from the UK, and despite what Americans here may tell you, 
cheating doesn't really count for all that much in divorce, in England and Wales, don't know about Scottish slash North Ireland law. My advice to you is to seek some legal advice ASAP, if you can afford it then great, if not try and find your local support through court. They even have a phone service, which can help you out with some info. Regarding jacket holder, what a bell end, if you hit him you are letting yourself in for a world of pain. You'd be better off sharing the guy's behavior with everyone else he knows, do your best to warn all the other married men of his behavior and what he's like. This isn't going to make him popular at all, cutting him off from his friends will hurt him far more than hitting him, and hitting him is only going to mess your life up. You don't need the stress of impressing charges right now. Good luck and Godspeed. Great advice. I wish I'd had that info when similar crap happened to me. Cheating doesn't amount to much in the US courts either. No one cares, no one's going to ask for proof why you wanted a divorce. There is no evidence to show the divorce police. You will still be expected to come to a mutual agreement or split your assets 50-50. Cheating or not. It can count for a lot in some courts when it comes to alimony. It depends on the state. In some states, a no-fault divorce can only happen if both spouses agree. If she contests the divorce, he'll have to explain why he wants it, in some states, grounds for divorce is still very much a thing. He'll still get divorce, just if she contests it will take longer is all. Never thought anyone would even see this never mind take time to reply. Thank you. Have just spent the last hour spilling all to two random dog walkers, who see me under the bridge and were concerned about me. Two nice older women. Have also had a few texts off her asking where am I since my work van is still in the driveway and I'm nowhere to be found. It's not that I'm nervous to go back home. It's just that the thought of seeing her stupid face is annoying me. Think I'll just text back saying I'm out. As far as playing it cool while I collect more evidence, I just can't. I've never been good at poker, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I don't need evidence anyway, I've seen it with my own eyes. I just truly don't want to speak to her again man, don't know what I'm going to do. Have you got a close friend you can ring? Because you need them, you need someone now. Don't let pride get in your way. Get that friend to come to you, let them help you. Stay with them if you can for a day or so, while you sort your head out. Don't go back home now. Please ring a friend. Edit to update, I went to a friend's house to calm down, I threw the vodka away. She has been texting me asking where I am as my work van is still in the driveway. I text her saying there is a problem with the engine so I got a lift into work. I'll make my move tonight. Now for the update. Thank you to everyone who reached out to me after my first post, was really appreciated. So yesterday after I had written the post and was in a complete mess, two dog walkers came over to check on me as I was obviously concerning them. I told them everything, they listened and the first thing one of them said to me was, Son, the worst thing you can do right now is drink, it'll cause carnage. I have to thank her for that, because I was on the highway to hell at that point. I threw the vodka away got in touch with a friend and he said I could come to his for a while to calm down, he was at work, but told me where the spare key was, we live in a small town of around 15,000 people and he wasn't too far away, so once I got there, I sat on his couch just trying to calm down. Throughout the morning, I was getting multiple texts and phone calls from my wife asking where I was and what the hell was up, as my work van was still sitting in the driveway and I was nowhere to be seen. I text her back telling her that there was a problem with the engine, so I got a lift into work which she seemed to buy, as she just texted back saying okay. When my friend got back from his work at about 5 o'clock, I told him everything that had happened and asked him his opinion. I also told him not to tell anyone about jacket holder, as that might then get back to my wife which I didn't want at this point. I would deal with him later. By that I mean I'll expose what a little rat he is, knocking FK out of him doesn't help me at all as of now as an aside to the people saying he done nothing wrong. He messaged my wife first, he was being extremely flirty. What the f is he even playing at messaging my wife for in the first place? He only knows her in passing, from afar. Look I've got no problem with two adults conversing with each other, but they hardly knew each other, and it was flirty from the start, as far as I could tell. I think they've seen each other while out and about, and it's gotten flirty then. So, my friend convinced me to try and keep a low profile and see what I could dig up, but at the same time speak to a lawyer and get the ball rolling in terms of finding out my options, which I have done today. He took me home about 6 o'clock and I was honestly dead on my feet by that point. I think the adrenaline pumping the entire day then suddenly stopping, knocks it right out of you, so I was extremely tired when I got home. The second I walked through the door, 
I knew something was up as my wife was on me right away asking me all sorts of questions about work. I asked her, why does she even care, and she said that I'd left my big flask and my lunch bag in the front passenger side seat and something's been up today, she could feel it. I was about to lie but I was just too tired, I couldn't be bothered putting any sort of charade up, so I just said yeah there is something up. That when I was putting her drunken butt to bed last night, a message came up on her iWatch, which I read. And all the other ones. And that she was a freaking disgusting cheat. That I wanted nothing more to do with. Her demeanor went from an arms crossed person in power, to scared little girl within about a second. Good at keeping secrets eh? Begging that little rat for action eh? Yep, read it all. She started sobbing and I just walked away and upstairs into the shower. When I got out, she was sitting on the top stair crying still, and the excuses started right away. How she was drunk, vulnerable, had never done anything like that before, how he had messaged her first and it didn't mean anything, she was never going to go through with it. Pretty much everything that everyone on here was saying she would say, like she had the playbook out. The only thing she didn't do was try and blame me, she probably knew I would have thrown her right out the door if she had tried that crap. I told her that I wanted a divorce and her out of the house within a month. Also told her, that she was moving to the spare room. I've been pretty much ignoring her ever since, just scowling at her and shaking my head when she starts waffling nonsense. I don't want to hear it. She slept in the spare room last night, and I haven't spoken to or texted with her at all today. If I'm lucky, maybe she'll be gone when I get back from work, but my luck's not that good I suppose. On getting her out though, I was telling my parents what was happening today and my mother was adamant I wasn't throwing her out onto the streets. Her and my mother are close and always have been, we'd have been together 11 years in December. My mother was saying she made a mistake and that we should sort it out like adults, that we've been through too much together, and that she didn't actually do anything, it was just words. She completely took her side over mine, couldn't believe it. Could this F me here? Like do I have no right to ask her to leave if my mother is against it? It's literally going to be my house when my parents pass and I did nothing wrong, so I'm not leaving. It's probably going to turn into War of the Roses Part 2. I managed to get myself an appointment with a divorce lawyer for next week, so I'll be going to that to discuss my options. Until then, I'm just going to ignore my soon-to-be ex-wife I guess. I know she's probably not going to admit anything else now, I'll never know if she was a really good liar or she was just talking crap to him, to get him on side with her for an affair. Anyways sorry about the delay in the update, just got the chance to write it now as I'm finishing work. Well, back to the funhouse I guess. Now for the top comments. I've never been in this situation before in my life, but I have some advice. Try and find a hobby to distract yourself, sports, games like cards, cycling, running, maybe go to your buddies for a bit, play video games with whoever you play with. I'm sorry for all this happening to you, I wish I could offer more help I wish you the best of luck with this whole situation. This is great advice. Anything you can do to take care of yourself and give yourself some love during this painful time, will help you heal. Sounds like you have at least one great friend you can lean on, but I'd eventually look into getting professional help too. I would add, ignore the users telling you to burn bridges with your mom. She just loves you and your wife both and doesn't like seeing either one of you hurt, and you're both hurting now, although for extremely dichotomous reasons. She, of course, has seen every part of your life, and all the mistakes you've made along the way to become who you are. She has experience forgiving and loving your mistakes, so it's easier for her to forgive this mistake by your wife. That doesn't mean you have to forgive her too, and your mom will come around to your perspective eventually. Your mother is absolutely wrong. It's not a mistake when someone takes the steps to cheat like that, it's a series of deliberate decisions. She decided to respond, she decided to flirt, she decided to ext, she decided to cheat. Every message sent is another decision made. It's not a mistake. It's many. Repeatedly. Back to back. Oh my god. Yes OP, listen to this. My ex cheated and left me last year and my mom tried that same crap for a while, I had to shut it down quick. Your mom of all people should be on your side. So they're friends. She was your wife until she cheated, which you have proof of, so if you can have respect and cut her off, so can your mom. Uck, why are people like this? You might be hosed on the legal eviction part of this if you're not the owner, consult the lawyer about this, but you still need to go through with the divorce. Don't change your mind on this based on your mother's opinion, she's not the one who was hurt by your wife's thoughtless and malicious actions. She should get the message that she's not wanted in the house soon enough. Maybe Jacket Holder will give her a place to stay for a while. 
Legality depends on who is the tenant. If they are both in the lease then no, he cannot evict her. Since it is family, there might not be a written contract, so it's all verbal. Then it could go either way, but with a divorce and her cheating, a judge may declare him the one with the right to the dwelling over the wife. I'd get a written lease from the parents with his name only or become familiar with his rights as a co-tenant with the wife and see if he has grounds to keep the dwelling. Now for the last story. Dating the other betrayed spouse? My fiancé had an affair with a woman who was also engaged at the time. He broke up with me when he found out her fiancé had dumped her and kicked me out of our apartment, so she could move in. We have a dog together who still lives with him, so I haven't gone completely no contact, but he's been rubbing his new relationship in my face constantly by telling me how the AP is his soulmate, and he's oh so happy. The ironic thing is that, his affair partner has been begging her ex to take her back since he broke up with her. She's even gone to his parents house trying to beg them, to help convince him to give her a second chance. I've been talking to the other betrayed spouse a lot since I found out, he was the one who exposed the affair. He's been my rock during this and we've become close friends. He recently commented on a post of mine on Facebook and my ex immediately started blowing up my phone, asking me if we were dating. He's since been claiming he made a mistake, and he wants us back. He's called me crying a few times saying he'll do anything for me to give him a second chance. My ex seems to have mentioned his suspicions to his affair partner, and she's since sent me a few threatening texts to stay away from her husband. The other betrayed spouse is currently traveling for work, so we mostly talk by text or FaceTime occasionally. Yesterday, I mentioned what my ex had said, and he responded with, we should do it. He said he'd been thinking about asking me out for a while now but wasn't sure if it was too soon for me. Has anyone else dated the other betrayed spouse? Is this a bad idea? Now for the top advice. Girl, I say go for it. Big time. You two deserve some fun and good times. The fact that it will drive both exes crazy, is just the icing on this delicious cake. I only ask for a full update after the date. Even if you don't, it would be hilarious to make them think you are. Maybe even exchange info on certain characteristics that you would only normally know from intimacy. Mole or scar. You can drive them nuts, lol. Most stories that have both betrayed spouses together, end well, and if you decide to date, take a nice picture to send them with caption, play stupid games when stupid prize is so by. I love this. Especially the caption. This happens a lot. The two of you have bonded over a shared trauma and probably have a similar value set when it comes to relationships. The other plus is that, it really punishes your exes for their stupid games. They do need some consequences after all. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. Turn the notification on to get updated on my latest posts. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.